Hello, happy paper people. Welcome to the neighborhood. I'm Marianne, and I'm so glad you could join me today on our YouTube Happy Paper People community. We are also on Facebook as a Happy Paper People community. And I'm Marianne of Marianne's Craft Design on Etsy. And my YouTube and Facebook collaborator is Sharon Shields of Texture Muse on Etsy. You can find both of us there. And I am so excited today because it's May. And May 1st begins our new inspiration prompts called All About. Now, hopefully you watched yesterday's video with Sharon and I explaining to you what an All About is. But May's All About is junk mail. May's All About Junk Mail. That's all it is. May's All About Junk Mail. So we've been telling you to, to collect your junk mail. I know some of you have been getting a lot less junk mail since we've been quarantined at home. So hopefully you've got some, but you don't need a whole lot. And honestly, there's a lot of things that you can find that you might not even think of to use uh, in the mail. So collect your junk mail, get creative. What can you imagine that junk mail to be? What have you made with pretty paper before that you could now make with junk mail? So throughout the month, Sharon and I will be posting tutorials to inspire you and to show you some possibilities. We'll also be making other tutorials, so don't worry. We'll get those as well. But during the month of May, as you're creating things with your junk mail, I'm going to challenge you to make at least one thing that only uses junk mail other than tools. Tools meaning stamps, ink, glue, that kind of thing. No washi tape, no uh, stickers from somewhere else, no um, pretty paper added to it, no ribbon, only junk mail. Can you do it? I'm going to give you some inspiration tonight. And tonight, why did I say tonight? Don't know. Never know where those things come from. I will tell you that my inspiration for this came from Julie Parker. Julie is one of our founding members of the Happy Paper People community on Facebook, and she's amazing. She makes um, her version of every tutorial we put out there, and she's always more than willing to share it with everyone and inspire them and share her ideas and how she did it. That's just how this community is. Everybody shares with everybody. Nobody's trying to you know, hide their process or their technique. And Julie showed me a bookmark, very similar to this one, and it had a great piece of paper for journaling inside of it. And she said, do you think this would be something you'd wanna do a tutorial on for the group? Now, how's that for sharing? She's willing to take something that she created and just say, hey, Marianne, you wanna do a tutorial for the group because this might be a cool project. And I said, yeah, I think that's an excellent one. And then immediately I thought that will be a perfect one for junk mail. So May's all about junk mail. So we're gonna start it right off by making a bookmark with a journaling page inside of it entirely out of junk mail, including the ribbon, including the flower, and the center of the flower. So let's get busy. I'm gonna show you how to do this. All right, so I gathered up some junk mail. Now, this is gonna be our ribbon in the end. The paper that I, uh, the, the advertisement that I tore this off of happened to have, it was a, sh a small one, and on the other side of it, it had another uh, fairly clean edge there. So I tore that edge off of that one so I would have uh, another one that was good for a ribbon as well. So I'm gonna set that to the side for a minute and show you what I brought in here to the studio today. I just grabbed, in fact, most of the mail still has mail in it. Um, but I've got, you know, as I look at this, I look at this, this is great red paper right there. Look at, it's even got polka dots on it. Yeah, look at that, there's a wood grain. There's wood grain paper right there. Think of all the things you could do with that. 
That's some cool design right there. But I mean, seriously, you kind of look at this stuff as junk mail. You don't really think about it. Look at that. There's some great flowers to cut out. Even some lawn. Ah, that tub or hot tub looks nice. Okay, but because today we're going to make this bookmark with journaling page, all I need is I need a good envelope. And I like the one with the window in it. And honestly, when I first thought of this after looking at Julie's inspiration piece, I was going to put a cool sticker here, maybe a botanical that you could see through the window. And now I was, I was making it, I thought, you know what, I'm going to challenge my community, my Facebook family to make something entirely out of junk mail. So I'm going to take the challenge myself. So I decided to do that. And so I didn't add that botanical, but I put a stamp on there to give it a little bit of interest. Okay, so I've got this one, and I already cut the edges off because that's just the time-consuming part. And I'm thinking, because this is solid here, that could be that could be our journaling page inside. And we can fold it like this, and so this could be the journal page to write on, and this could be the outside. Okay, so we've got that will be the journaling page inside. We need an envelope. Let's see. Okay, I would take this. Oh, it's even open. Uh, this junk mail, and I will cut out that stamp right there and make a faux stamp, although it is a real stamp, but, you know, and that'll be a pretty cool one there. But um, there's another envelope inside not sure what this is, but there is an envelope inside. So let's take a look at that. Is that one we could use? We probably could. What can I use? Maybe I can cut that off and still use this one. Huh, I think I can because we don't need it to be very wide. The front is not as wide as the back so that we have can easily slide something in. We need to have enough space on the side of the windows so that it doesn't tear into it, which is about right here on the front. And then that still preserves our stamp and no matter how far we wanna go out on the back, there's plenty of room. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Let's grab a cutter. That's a tool, so you can use a cutter or you can use scissors. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is cut this stamp off uh, let's see, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut that. I'm gonna cut this stamp off, and the cut that I'm gonna make here is going to be the back. Okay, I don't want to cut where the front is gonna be, or I'm gonna cut the back off with it. So be very careful of that. So first cut I'm making is going to be the back, and I want to just make sure I get past that stamp so that I can use that stamp for another project. You can do so many things with junk mail. It's amazing. You can build an entire journal out of junk mail. Literally, the base and everything. We could even use this. Lick that closed. And look at that. There's a little pocket. Or put that on a, uh, make that page trim on the edge. And you can tuck things into it. So that whole entire envelope, nothing has to go to waste. In fact, I'm looking at this thinking when I cut off the front strip right here, that strip could be the ribbon. So it has, you know, literally used everything of that. Okay, I need a pair of scissors. <clears throat> Got to get going here. We're still trying to keep the videos fairly short because it still takes a long time to upload them on YouTube. I'm going to cut that in just a bit. So I can take off the front, but I don't want to go in too deep. Okay, so by cutting that in, I can lift this up a bit and get it underneath the cutter. And I don't want to go past, I'm going to go the other way, sorry, because this is the back. I don't want to cut the back off. I need to cut the front. I almost put that down backwards. Okay, but I don't want to get too close to the window so I can see where that is. And I'm going to say I want to cut off about that much. So I get that in there and then slide it all the way down. And then I'm going to look where I am on this mark. And I'm going to line up with that mark on the other end. So I can just slide this cutter down here. 
And I'll have to slide my paper down. I know that the cutter is not as long as the paper, but it doesn't matter. Your scissors wouldn't be either if you were using scissors. And uh, it just takes up less space than the great big one. There we go. Just like that. That's so fun. I'm even looking at this and going, wouldn't that make a great pocket on a page? Give away all my ideas for future tutorials with junk mail. Now, you'll, you will think of, I know, I know my people. You will think of a lot of the same things that Sharon and I think of, and you will make them before we ever get a chance to make a tutorial about them. Okay, now I want to ink it up, just like I did this one. And <clears throat> I decided to use the same colors as I did on that one. And I used a, a Distress Oxide Victorian Velvet. It just really comes out, you know, pink and velvety. And I use Vintage Photo. I really like mixing the two of them together. Even the stamp I did. I did the Victorian Velvet down first, and then I did the Vintage Photo on top of it, so it'd be like a shadow of it. And then I touched it a little bit on the cellophane, and so it smears. But, you know, that's how things are when they're 100 years old, right? And this is 100 years old. Well, you know. In my mind it is okay so first of all I need my ink pads here well I got my ink pads I mean my dauber pads okay so I'm going to do the Victorian velvet first and you know don't really like inking on camera a lot because it does take up so much time but because it's a fairly small project and it's not going to take us that long to do I'm going to go ahead and do this because it is important that it's done <clears throat> at this stage and it's not going to get any more naked than this you're not going to take the the envelope down any farther than this so this is about the best you're going to get as far as as uh, inking it okay now how do I get that edge how do I get that edge, you're asking? I just need, well, I, I need this one, so let me cut that one off that we want for sure, so I don't use that for something. I'm just gonna go like this, because we want a piece of writing paper out of that. <clears throat> and now I just, let see if we could use that as a window in something too. But right now I just need a piece of uh, scratch paper to put in here so we don't ink. So I don't want to ink the whole back of that. And <clears throat> just to quickly get this done, <clears throat> I'm going to do like that. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a frog in, oh, I don't have to take that off. I have two of them with me today. <clears throat> And then I'm gonna put the vintage photo right on top of it. Now, what that does, it gives it that, the vintage photo is kind of the browned edged look, but yet it has a rosy tint to it. I, I don't know, there's just something about that that I really like, it's just that rosy tint, that pink underlying it. It's, it is kind of velvety, and um, you don't see it a ton, you just see that that aged look is, is kind of pretty. I like it, I like it a lot. This would be pretty edged in any color. So think about whatever journal you're making or you have coming up. <clears throat> and you can you could ink this. You could ink this in any color um, to match your journal coming up. Okay, so <clears throat> let's take care of this piece of paper that's going to be our journal page inside our writing space. And I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna line this up. I wanna I wanna cut this little part of the flap off. So I wanna get over that. And then wherever I am, I'm gonna line it right up there at four and a quarter so I can get this edge too and hopefully make that fairly straight. I'm gonna leave that there for right now, not worry about it because I'm going to take off this flap too. I'm gonna do that so. There we go. And so then when I come down here and take off this flap, that's gonna come off. So throw those into recycle. I have so many scraps and strips that I'm not going to keep those. But if you don't have any scraps, you don't have any strips, definitely keep those. Keep your scraps from your junk mail because 
There's lots of allabouts coming, and you're going to need them. You're going to need scraps, scraps of anything, scraps of fabric, scraps of wrapping paper, scraps of scrapbook paper, scraps of junk mail. Those would be the primary things that I would keep if it were me just uh, starting to collect so that I would have some. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so there's the outside. And we might want to, this is our writing page inside. So let's ink that one up too. So if you've, if you enjoy this video or if you've enjoyed any others on our channel, please give them a thumbs up and share them. Help other like-minded people find our community. If you like some of the things we're doing on YouTube, come on over to Facebook and check out our Facebook family there, Happy Paper People. I promise you we're a little different from most groups that we've experienced before. And I can guarantee that you will meet some amazing, amazing people in our community. I'll put the link down below so that you can come over and check it out. There is some wonderful people there. Instant new friends, family who's willing to share, inspire, learn from you. All of that. Amazing people. Okay. And anytime we post a tutorial, we love for you to come to Facebook and post in the comments your version of what you made with that tutorial. Yeah, this one takes a little longer because we have to go down both the front and the back. Now, I went, kind of did that the normal way, but this really, because this is a fold, I should just do this a little bit over it because then it just has that fold mark, not the whole full-on ink edge like that. Flip it over. So really, this one is like inking it four times, which is not that long when you're doing it by yourself in your studio or your craft room or your kitchen table or wherever it is, and you've got the TV on. It's really not that long. But when you're watching somebody ink and you're like, just get on with it. I want to see what the next step is. The next step is vintage photo. <laughs> Sorry. But we do kind of need to do this at this point. So oftentimes we don't ink right here. But I do ink a lot. So I'm curious. I really would like um, to ask you to leave a comment and tell me when you make whatever your art is. Is it scrapbooking? Is it junk journaling? Is it cards? What is it that you do? And do you ink the edges of things like this, typically or regularly or 50-50 or... Because I know people who don't ink at all. And I know other people who ink everything. And I'm kind of paying attention as to what I do, you know, what I ink on and what I don't and, you know, kind of how I feel about that. But I'm really kind of curious to get a little bit of uh, demographics out there, I guess, uh, as to what the rest of you do. Okay, so there's our writing page. It'll go inside, so there it gives a little bit of texture um, right inside. And when you take it out, there's our writing space. So let's give that a little stamp, just like we did the other one. Just put right your story. We don't want to take a lot of space up there. And it's right here, because I just had put it on the other one earlier. So we'll do that. We want to leave a lot of space for journaling here. There we go. Okay, done with that. Okay, and then um, I also have this stamp that I used on the outside here, and I used it on the outside of the little one. So we could put it on here, and that might look kind of cool over the black. Um, I'm not really liking it on the cellophane because it wipes off too easily. So I'm thinking let's do, we need to, uh, this is our scrap paper again so we don't ink all over the pink mat here. Let's put it across the top. Since we can't, I had some really cool pink washi tape that I was gonna trim it up with. So why did I challenge myself to do it with only junk mail when I had some cool components? And then I would have put ribbon on the top. 
I mean, you know, isn't that what you'd normally do for the top of a bookmark like that? Oh, what the heck, let's just keep going all the way around. But I'm gonna kind of take it off the page. Whoops, a little too far off the page. There we go. Because I didn't want to get it on the cellophane window. That's why. Okay. And here's how we do this. I don't want to stamp over that one that's already on there. Like I did that one. Because that one's pretty clean. Those actually lined up really well to do that. Okay. Now I'm going to do some vintage photo over them. See, even taking time to... Let's see. I'm trying to get that line. Oh, there we go. Good. I, I, I really like it to be a good shadow. I don't want it to be exactly on it. I want it to be a good shadow. Oh, that one's almost exactly on it. A uh, little too big of a shadow. Trying to get a good shadow there. And do it quickly. It's kind of cool with the pink and the vintage photo shadow. There we go. Okay, set that aside. Let's set that one aside. We're probably done with it. Okay. Oh, no, we're not. We got to do something on here. We got to do something on here. Is this overkill with the same stamp? I could go find another one. I just don't want to take the time to do that while we're in the middle of doing this. Okay, I'm only going to put it on one side because then if, hang on a second here. Let's get the vintage photo over there. If you want to put it in like this and see it, you can. If you want to turn it over and put it in this way and not see it, you can. So I'm only going to do the one side. Oh, we just got Victorian velvet on our vintage photo. Is that right? Yep, yeah, right direction. Mmm. There we go. A double stamp. Okay. All right, so that goes in there. We've got our writing space, and we've got our bookmark. Now, all we need is a flower and uh, a ribbon. Okay, so I happened to see this one on my desk that we did a while ago, and I looked at this ribbon, and that was my inspiration for that. I thought, why can't I just cut a ribbon out of paper? Why not? I said, well, I don't know why not, so we're going to do that. I need an envelope. I want just... Um, or a piece of paper that came out of an envelope like this. I threw some other random pieces up here. I'm gonna grab one of these, okay. I'm gonna fold the print on the inside. I don't care what it is because the print's gonna end up being, the underneath of this is print, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna fold the paper in half. I'm gonna fold it in half again and I'm gonna fold it in half a third time to make my flower. Now I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the flower because we'll do another tutorial where we go over how to make several different kinds of flowers and I'll review this one so that you have more, much more specific, you know, if it's, if it's a little confusing doing it fast. But I folded it three times. Then I'm gonna to go to the side that has the fold, the last side that has the fold. That's what I want towards me. And now I'm going to cut. And what I'm going to cut is one flower petal. Okay? So I'm going to cut Oops. I don't really like the shape of that one. Okay. And I never get the sides the same. So then when I'm done, I come back here to the center and I want to round that a little bit more. And <laughs> that's kind of funky, isn't it? But you know, that's kind of pointy. 
All right, let's even round that one a little bit more. Eh, they're paper flowers, they don't have to be perfect. I do like just a little bit indention in the center there because that actually becomes the center of our flower. When I open this up, and I move this over, you see there's our flower. Okay, so I'm gonna stack them back together and all facing, all having the writing facing the same direction so that I can ink them. And it's easier to do them together because they're just one flimsy little piece of paper. It's difficult to do that. And it's okay if I get a lot of ink on the petal itself because that's kind of what flowers look like is color, right? And so I do want color on my flower. And so I'm gonna just put that one in the behind position and I'm gonna ink this one. The ones under it get a little bit, but the one on top gets most. Put it behind, do it again, ink my fingernail, <laughs> it's in the way. Okay, and there's one more under there. Okay, last petal. Okay, so all four are pink. Now I need to get that vintage photo on top of them because that's kind of pink and flowers are most definitely not one dimensional. So it needs the dark of the vintage photo to give it some dimension. And you can see that start to take place right away. Add that anywhere. And you, and you could use any, you could do black. You could do the pink and, and black or um, yellow and black would be really pretty. Or I've got tulips that are red and black or orange and black or or um, orange and red, you know, those kinds of things. You could um, cut the petals more the shape of a particular flower if you're, you know, kind of good at that, which I'm not. So I just want to cut something that's semblance of a flower. You know what it is, right? You look at that, you can tell it's a flower. And I'm, you know, I'm no... Uh, artist with scissors. <laughs> Just, all I had to do was cut one leaf that's kind of sort of like a leaf. And you saw how after, even after cutting it out, I could keep trimming it until it had some decent shape that I like. Okay, so now there's my four pieces. Well, that one's got a lot of white on it, so I'm going to put that one on the bottom. And then that one does too. So let's go. So we put two in the shape of a cross. Okay, now sometimes when I start layering these, put the third on and find that that's enough, you know, if I realign those. But because I've already done one and I looked at it, I know that I really liked it best with all of them on. That's a pretty nice flower. Okay, so there's the top, there's the next, there's the next. Now all I need is a quick drying glue that's good with paper, and all I need is a dot in the middle. But I do want it to be quick drying, okay? And a dot in the middle. Oop, that was kind of a big dot. This one's going to go diagonally. <clears throat> and one more dot in the middle. Diagonally the other direction. Okay. And there's our flower. All right. Now we need the center, right? We need the center. Okay. So then I took this piece of paper that we used for that, and I just, like... I don't even I just grabbed some of it and started started balling it up, making a center of the flower. Kind of folding, just kind of folding, balling as I go. Squishing it. That's getting kind of big. When it gets too big to the point of big, that's where you can stop. But I would like it to be a little bit taller, although I don't want it too tall because it's gonna be a bookmark. So I do have to keep that in mind do have to keep that in mind. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right here. It's a little thick to tear. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of quick drying paper glue. This is art glitter glue, you know I love it. Underneath anything that's sticking out and this end over here. So I can push those down so they'll be underneath. 
And then this end stuff, just gonna push it down, down, down. Kind of like a fabric button. Have you ever covered a fabric button and you stretch the fabric over the button? This isn't a perfect stretch because you know the center of flowers isn't perfect stretch, but you stretch the, the fabric over the button, you pull it all to the underneath and then there's different ways of adhering it, but that's that's all we're doing there. I feel like this is a really thick uh, fold right there and might need a little extra glue. Okay, now I'm getting stuck to an ad. All right, so there's our center. Now our center needs some color. Again, if you were doing a specific uh, kind of flower, I'm gonna give this lots of color, not just the edge you could um, make the center black or um, white. You could leave it white or make the daisy white and the center yellow or, you know, whatever. Whatever you want. It's always artist choice and it's not done till the artist says it's done, remember? If you don't like it, it's only paper. Put another layer around it. You can still keep that little bump, that little button right there, and then just put another layer over top of it so you can change the color or if you don't like the shape or how something's sticking out. That's all you have to do. All right, so now I'm gonna cover the bottom with generous glue, even though this is really good adhesive because it's just a really thick thing I'm asking to stick down there. And I'm gonna set it right in the center and then I'm pushing it down. I'm gonna push it down really hard and just hold it for a minute. Doesn't take long. Our glitter glue dries so quickly and even, oh, I'm gonna need those again, aren't I? Even um, this where I've got this great big knob in the middle. See, it's already dried, already dried. Okay, so, and we just decide where to put it. I really like that spot right there. This I left a lot more white on it. Interesting look, interesting that they're different. Different every time. That's an artist. Things are different every time you do them. All right, so let's just get a little bit of glue on this paper so we can put this down. Now, I don't want it hanging over here because I think those will get ripped and torn off. But I'm okay if it hangs over here because it's got this to protect it. So that's why I'm choosing to go right there. You can go anywhere you want. You could go in the middle. Oh. Dropped my glue. You could go in the middle of the cellophane if you wanted. Okay, now what have we got left? The only thing we've got left is the tag. Let's take, and this is short enough that, that it's not gonna get in the way there, but I'm going to first punch a hole. Whew, dropping everything, huh? You can use any hole punch you want. Round, square, you can use an awl and just poke a hole. You can do whatever you want. And I'm going to use, just forgot what it's called. What kind of, I forget what kind of shape that is called. But I like that because it's a little bit longer and fatter. Um, I need something to do the ribbon on. Okay. Yeah, this is a small piece for ribbon, so it's not gonna be easy just to do the edge. So I'm just kind of going down the edge. It's gonna get a lot in the middle. I'm okay with that because ribbon is all would all be colored. The ribbon wouldn't just be edged. But it's not even. It's not getting this even color everywhere, and I like that. So it looks a little more aged. On this side, I'll show you. We do the vintage photo first, which we can do. You can do either way, it doesn't make any difference. Although sometimes it might change the look a little bit. And I kind of like the, the pink underneath the vintage photo on top of that. So the pink really isn't as obvious. Okay, now comes the careful, careful part. All right, so I'm gonna put it in from the back to the front. And I'm going to bring, now if I hadn't taken this off the edge, I would have torn a piece of, of envelope and I would have torn down the other side too. I'm okay if it has one straight edge. Um, if it has, you know, two torn edges, that's good too. 
And I know, based on how I like to put these types of ribbons in, that I'm going to bring these two together like that. So bring it like that in a, in a U or in a horseshoe, and then I'm gonna lay these flat, and bring them together like that. Now to get them through that hole, I'm gonna put one on top of the other to get them through the hole. And I'm going from the back forward, and very carefully pulling them through. There's not a lot of tightening of this one because if you pull it, you're going to tear your paper. Okay. And then I'm going to take both ends. See how they're, that's the same way they came out? And I'm going to stick them through the loop. And then I'm carefully still pulling that through the hole, but now it's getting wider because it's getting to the end there, and that's where it's not gonna want to come together any farther and tighten like a ribbon would. So, let's just get these through without tearing them up. And bring that over. There we go. Just like, ooh, it is tightening up a little bit. Much better than the first one did. Okay, you can ease this in the back, you can ease this through the hole with your finger, and then you can ease this out just ever so little bit. And I'm good with that right there. So I'm going to stop, there's a big gap, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to press it down flat. So that becomes the top of the ribbon right there. I do like these a little bit separated, like that, like it's the two ta uh, tails of the ribbon. I'm going to grab my paper glue, my art glitter glue, and go underneath it, put a little squirt on that one and a little squirt on that one, tiny bit in the middle. And then I'm gonna press this down so then those two will stay like that and now they are attached to the ribbon. It won't slide around, it won't slide out. That gives us a little more stability too because there's multiple layers. So there's the back, there's the front. Oh, I forgot to turn this around and do the back. And I am ink the back. You can do that. You could also stamp on the back if you want. Okay, so now we're going to take our journaling card. And we're going to put that inside our bookmark. And it's ready to go into a journal or into a book. See the backgrounds are a little bit different on these security envelopes. They, may, they do make for, for nice backgrounds on things that you make with uh, junk mail. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope it's inspired you to uh, get your creativity going and, and make something that you've never made out of junk mail before. Be sure to come on over to Facebook and post pictures of your version of the junk mail bookmark with writing paper. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you soon.